Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Friday, August the 30th, race number six at the Spa. Let's throw up the field for the grade three Saranac, three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th on the Mellon Turf Course. Seven entered the seven proprietary trade is a main track only. But as you see from our colleague David Aragona's morning line, this is a wide open race, Mike, with the one West Hollywood, the tepid two to one favorite. Yeah, it's, it is kind of a wide open race too, Dad. I mean, there's nobody, these horses are all for the most part very lightly raced and nobody has, you know, that sort of breakout stakes performance yet. Somebody may perhaps get it here. We'll take a look at our time form U.S. pace projector. West Hollywood, the number one, showed speed in his first two starts in North America, but a different dimension last time out, and it certainly worked out at Saratoga. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think the two villain who's a versatile horse is going to show speed, but isn't the big torpedo just going to try to go out there as he did last time against state breads? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's facing a tougher field here, and it is good to know that this horse is very versatile. Dan. They don't have to be on the lead with him, but in this race, I don't see why Eric Cancel wouldn't come out of there running and try to make the lead. We'll see if the villain tries to go with him. Potentially the key to this race from a pace standpoint is the European entrant, the number three, Take Me to Church, making his first start for Brad Cox because he has shown some natural speed overseas. But we'll start things off with the number one, West Hollywood. And here's the closing win I mentioned in that first level allowance race. He did get a quick pace to attack, and he comes with a strong run under Flavian Pratt to win. He earned a strong 83 buyer speed figure for that race. And uh, he runs back to that race. He's going to be tough in here. Yeah, I like this performance from him. He traveled strongly throughout this race, Dan, moved up into some traffic on the final turn, got clear in the stretch, and he's basically, you know, sort of under strong handling there at the end of that race to close it down. I, I thought he ran really well in there. I can't say that I loved his loss. Two starts back at Churchill Downs, but um, listen, I don't really see any reason to be too hard on him for that. He's very lightly raced. He clearly has some talent. It's your call if you want to take him as the favorite in here, but this horse has a chance to be all right. Villain is the number two. He's won two of his last three starts. The only loss was when they tried to really stretch him out in distance in the Kent going a mile and three-eighths at Delaware. He rebounded from that race with this victory against Allowance Company at Monmouth, and he got away with a very easy lead on the backstretch. He drifts out significantly in upper stretch, but at a big price, he always has enough to hold the runner up at bay. Yeah, I like this performance from him. Um, he did, for the most part, he got control, but it, it, it's at least worth noting that early in the race, a big long shot did come running at him, Dan. It looked like he wanted the lead, and Juarez just wouldn't let him have it. He made that horse for, sort of back off, so it's not like this horse just walked around the track. He had to run a little bit early, and he stayed on late. It was a real step in the right direction for Villain. Take Me to Church, the number three, was purchased at public auction by Flurry Racing Stables and Brad Cox for $380,000 back in June, and he was in good form over there. He wasn't facing the top competition until most recently. When they tried him in the Irish 2000 Guineas, he showed pace in that race, made the lead, and was just no match for those horses. The winner came back to win the St. James Palace. The runner-up won the Group 3 jersey, so he fits better with these. Seems like, yeah, it seems like this is probably a way better spot for him. I was sort of conflicted um, about his form over there, Dan. I can't say that I loved any of his races when he got the, the big blowout win three starts back. He, he was just loose on the lead over very heavy turf, and I just felt like nobody was really running behind him. I didn't know what to do with him. I guess I could just say I'll wait and see what kind of price he is. But he can't be a big price in this race. I'm probably not using the source. Yo Daddy, the number four, has performed well on dirt and turf, albeit against weaker competition since being claimed for $50,000 by Linda Rice. Let's watch his most recent turf effort. Three starts back during the Belmont at the Big A meet. This is a $50,000 starter allowance. He swings out into the stretch with a look. He'll end up running second as the favorite. And he's coming into this race off a big win on dirt. Yeah, his his last couple of turf races sort of looked like this one, Dan, where, you know, he just he's running late. It looks like he's maybe going to get there, and he, di he didn't get there either time. Kind of felt like he had a little bit of hang in him. Linda Rice added blinkers last time on dirt, and it, it feels like it made a pretty big difference. I realized that he ran a 90 two starts back, and he only ran a 90 again last time. To me, he really improved with the blinkers last time. I wonder if he'll transfer that to turf now, because he seems like a horse who's adaptable as far as surface goes. 
Well, I see more focus out of the gate last time as well. Yeah. I think Yo Daddy had always been like a bad gate horse, but he figured it out with the blinkers, and he doesn't have to be uh, the next coming of Hindu to win this one. The five is the Big Torpedo, one of the better New York bred three-year-old turfers around. Here's his most recent race, the New York Stallion Series, where he just went to the front. Now, he carved out some legitimate fractions, basically a 24-second opening quarter, 22-4 and four second quarter, and that's just too much for these overmatched foes. Yeah, just just dominated th these horses on the lead. He faced a very similar group of horses two starts back when they returned him to sprinting. He got a great trip that day. He's just bossing those horses around, Dan. He's too good for the three-year-old New York bred turf horses. But this is a horse who Tom Morley has run against open stakes horses on the grass as well. And he's acquitted himself well in those races. To me, he's just a good horse and he's not overmatched by open stakes rivals. And in some ways, I feel like he's the horse to beat in here. The number six is The Process. Cherie DeVoe took a little bit of a step back with this horse and returned her off of a short layoff at Horseshoe Indianapolis. A good performance two starts back. And last time out at Colonial, got a very nice trip when dominating that field at odds on. A confidence booster, perhaps, for a colt with upside. A beautiful pedigree, as damn as I have to Zenyatta, I believe. And yeah. uh, a horse that probably can show a little more here. Yeah, not sure what has made the difference with this horse dan but whatever it was that little layoff uh before he came back two starts ago this horse has really turned the corner it looks like i thought he ran really well too back because that was a fast pace race around two turns he was involved and he just got run down at the end by a closer in there i thought he ran really well that day that was another pretty fast paced race at colonial last time though dan he kept up close to it he was much the best in there i think this horse has really improved in his last two starts and i'm not surprised that sheree has decided to step him up here because I think he might be able to go with these horses. Proprietary trade, the seven has entered main track only and would obviously be a major danger if this race is washed off. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for Friday's Saranac at the Spa. You're going with the process. He seems much improved. Yeah, I just like the way that he's coming into this race, and I know that he's going to be a fair price in here, so I'm going to take him on top. I, again, I thought that the big torpedo was the horse to beat in here. I'm going to sort of try to fade the two cock horses in here. I think they both take money. Maybe one of them will win them, but I didn't love them. I prefer the three at the price, probably a better price than the one West Hollywood, but we'll see what we get from a price standpoint coming from Europe with him. A little concerned about the extra distance for the European runner as well. The big torpedo has just been speedy and solid, and he might end up the favorite in this race, and I won't want him as the favorite, but if he stays at five to two, that's more than fair for me. Five, three, two, six for me, six, five, one, three for Mike. It's Friday's race of the day, the Saranac at the Spa. Best of luck.